A couple of years ago, I was watching TV and I came upon an advertisement. I don't really remember what it was about, but I remember very vividly that the woman in the advertisement said something along the lines of, I am the breadwinner of my family, but don't tell anyone, so my husband won't be upset. A while after that, I started getting interested in superhero movies, and I always wondered why did people have this kind of resistance when it came to female superheroes. Last year, I was doing research for a school presentation, and I came across a photo that said that there are more men named John running companies than all women. What do these three situations have in common? Patriarchy. And it's funny because very few people know what patriarchy means, even though we live in a patriarchal society. The same way we live in a capitalistic one. And I think that's because people don't debate patriarchy. It's not a topic of our conversations like capitalism is and like it should be. We live in a capitalistic society, but there are countries in the world that don't. But there's no single country in the world that its society isn't patriarchal. Patriarchy is a social system in which men hold primary power and predominate in roles of political leadership, moral authority, social privilege, and control of property. Basically, today, men are more likely to have social, economic, and political power. But you're probably wondering, why is living in a patriarchal society even a problem? Our patriarchal society affects both men and women in different ways. Women are oppressed, violated, and excluded while men are compelled to be in and act a certain way, and if they don't act that way, they are also oppressed. Women are obviously way more affected, and men are to some extent benefited, but only to some extent. This type of system creates these ideas of men as the providers and women as the caregivers, and it reinforces gender stereotyped roles. Since men are expected to grow up to reach powerful positions, they are raised to believe that they can never show any sign of weakness. Boys are taught to suppress all their emotions and feelings, and boys are also taught to always think violence with power. And so, these boys grow up to be men that are emotionally damaged beings that sometimes are unable to solve conflicts without using violence, and that, in most cases, don't know how to, ex how to express their feelings, necessities, and emotions. And we can talk about toxic masculinity without mentioning chauvinism. The idea that everything that's male is more valuable than what's female leaves men thinking that they're somehow superior to women, which leads them to think that women exist simply to serve them. And so, girls are taught to do exactly that. The cooking, the cleaning, the taking care of children. We often see women as this kind of secondary character in the life of a man, the wife, the girlfriend, the lover. And we teach girls to aspire to that, and sometimes to that only. The biggest achievement in a woman's life is to get married. She should make all her life choices based on the fact that she must get married someday. And if she doesn't achieve that, if she doesn't get married, our society, our society sees it as she has failed in life. She couldn't find a man to love her. We do great, great harm to females when we teach them about relationships. We teach girls to see other women as competitors for the attention of men. We teach girls to think that they can only be truly happy when in a relationship with a man. And we teach them to see men as someone that has power over them, someone that we girls have to show respect to, even though in a lot of cases, we shouldn't expect to receive the same respect back. We also teach women to feel guilty when they do anything sexual with anyone. And that guilt also applies for when she has sexual relations against her will. When you are ashamed of something, you don't want to talk about it. I think we all know that. And so we don't. Women don't talk about it. They just let it go. I mean, it's not like anyone's going to believe them anyway. Rape is the only crime where the victim is judged by society just as much as a criminal. This is thankfully changing in movements like Me Too are giving space and courage for victims to come forward and tell their stories. But still, in Brazil, 90% of the cases of sexual violence go unnoticed. And so, it becomes okay to sexually assault or rape someone. I mean, 
you usually never get caught, and in most cases, nothing ever happens with rapists and sexual abusers. They just take what they want. And so it creates this vicious cycle. And then rape, women feel ashamed and don't tell anyone, or if they do have the courage and do tell, nothing ever happens with the rapist and he rapes again. So yes, all of this is a big problem and it is terrible to live in a patriarchal society. But good news is there is a solution, a very effective one actually. The solution is called feminism. And I bet that this word just made a lot of you uncomfortable. And that is part of the problem. Feminism is a belief in the social, economic, and political equality of the sexes. That's feminism's definition. It is not the contrary of chauvinism, and it is not a movement against men or against men's rights. It's very important that we all keep that in mind. As a woman, I've faced many problems and uncomfortable situations caused by chauvinism. And I found in feminism a sort of safe environment to express and learn about the roots of my frustrations and sorrows. I've been through situations that I think most women in this room also have, where I'd be walking in the beach and I hear men call me a haughty or a sexy and look at me like I'm an object in a shop window. The first time it happened to me, after the inevitable shame and disgust, the feeling of guilt flooded my head. I started thinking that I shouldn't be wearing only a bikini, even though I was literally on the beach, and that I was showing my body too much. So despite my nonconformity that today, in the 21st century, women and men still don't have equal rights, situations like that also proved to me the importance of feminism, not only as a way to fight, but as a mechanism to all women to understand that it's not our fault. For some years now, the feminist movement has grown a lot and feminists are starting to make more noise and draw more attention to the problems I've just spoken about. And that makes a lot of people very uncomfortable, mostly men, but not only. Some men got used to their privileges and they're not willing to give that up. They don't want women to have the same opportunities and rights that they have and they feel threatened that their lives may not be as easy as it is if gender equality is rich. Some men haven't under, understood or realized that they are in a privileged position, but it's about time that they and everyone does. When we talk about women that don't feel comfortable with the movement, the problem is a little bit different. Some women, especially more conservative ones, haven't realized the oppression that they are suffering. They believe in their hearts that they are less less valuable, less important, less worthy than men. And it's very sad, and that's very sad, how one can trick an entire group of people into believing something that's so not true. However, I do think it's time that people, especially well-educated people, understand the problem and face it. Part of the problem with patriarchy and sexism is that people that know and understand the problem do nothing when facing situations caused by said problems. Conservative or liberal, right or left, middle even. This is not about political sides, beliefs, religions, genders. This is about being human and understanding that a group of people is suffering and hurting and that this needs to stop. Stand up for something, to fight, and you don't have to go to every single protest or manifestation. You can go to none and still be a feminist and still make a difference. You don't have to know every little detail of each of the waves of feminism. It's cliche, but it's a little thing that matters, that makes a difference. When you're hanging out with your friends and you see one of them being abusive towards another woman or grabbing her or forcing her to do something and you do nothing, you're a big part of the problem. When you hear a prejudiced joke, you shouldn't laugh. You should question the meaning of the joke and how it shouldn't be considered funny. A great thing you can do, by the way, is when someone tells you a joke like that, you tell the person you didn't understand it, and it's gonna be very amusing to see the person try to explain it to you. I do understand that it's hard for some people to call themselves feminists, because as I mentioned before, 
This movement bothers a lot of people, and so there's a lot of stigmas and fake news about feminists and feminism. Last year, a news about a guy that said that women were sewing her vaginas at a college party, and a story about feminists defecating and having sexual relations in the church were published. Both these stories are lies, but before people could deny them, they had already gone viral in social networks in Brazil, and they shocked a lot of people. These news were obviously publish published by people that wanted to cause exactly that. And so it's very important that we understand that not everything that we read online is true, and that there's an agenda behind everything that's published. However, there's also another side of the story. Another reason why some people, especially women, don't want to be linked with the movement. Misconception. A lot of women misconcept what it actually means to be a feminist. When you picture a feminist, you think about a woman that doesn't shave, has lots of sexual relations, isn't feminine at all, doesn't want to have kids or get married, and if she does have kids, she cares more for her job than her kids, and she breasts, breastfeeds them in public. And women like that do exist, and that's totally fine. But the thing is, feminism isn't necessarily about that. Have sex with them people and not shave are choices that people can make. Feminism is about giving women the right to make that choice. It's about women not having to do anything. It's about, and it's about them not being ridiculed or shamed by whatever choice they happen to make. But so, when these feminists started to stand out, that made a lot of women think that for you to be considered a feminist, you have to fit exactly in this profile. When in fact, the only thing you have to do to be considered a feminist is to believe in and fight for gender equality. You can be a married, very feminine, conservative, that gave her a job to take care of the kids, and then never breast breastfeeds in public feminist. Being like this doesn't make you less of a feminist. It doesn't make you a less valuable feminist. So, independently of your gender, race, sexual orientation, political side, religion, if you believe in change, if you believe in equality, if you fight for it. Welcome to feminism. Thank you very, very much.